topic has been raised over and over lately by the Anglican Conference. They're talking about churches that don't have a disciple building program. You know, we have we have stuff and we do stuff. We have church, we do church. Um, but there's no intentional disciple building process. And so what's the guy's name? They brought the uh, he wrote the book of Sin. And, and uh, so he's talking about this intentional discipleship building process. And you're right, you know, we need to move past that. But we have to move more. Same old thing. So um, just so you know, here's our structure. Um, we talk about the pivot. And know that I'm only underlining two of these things. I tell people, you can go to classes in loving one another. I could probably all day, I could go to a class and kind of love saying I could probably love that. Study in Greek, um, analyze it psychiatrically or psychologically, sociologically. But yeah, you know, it's not all about saying a little bit more than just if I were in class to do this, something would all <laughs> So I tell people you can go to a class if you need, and once in a while there are relevant classes we put on in our church on this. But I tell people the one thing I can tell you is loving God is a process that's demanding and sometimes complicated. How to prep it, how to meaningfully prep it, is really sometimes an enormous challenge for people. How to read the scripture and find value in it and not get derailed by it. Okay? Uh, you know, the, don't forget, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who killed Jesus, they were, spirit, they were spiritual experts. They were biblical masters. And you know people in your town who are the exact same in the way they read scripture. They read scripture so much like Pharisees and Sadducees, it's weird. It's as if they've time traveled. And they are in, probably in the mega churches in the Okay, so people need to learn how to read scripture. The other area that I tell people you need to pivot to a lot is how to be spiritual healthy as a soul, as a father, a mother, a, a brother, a sister, a, a person who manages your finances, a person who manages your, your personal moods. And so we tell people we want you to choose every year to pursue these two topics. We offer classes during the year. And they're meant to, see. I, I want people to look back every year and say, yeah, I did something that helped me work on one of those two areas because I want to be more of a disciple. This is where I can go to a project, work alongside your great church. And as far as a neighbor, I better be out there. This is what, that's, what, that's what that means. But these I have to work on on purpose. So that's our kind of disciple model. But you need a discipleship model in your church, and, and, and it's certainly, but I'm going to talk in a different way. When we get down to talking about outsiders, uh, I'm going to keep talking about outsiders today, so I might, might as well start. Well, uh, you know, let's see. Uh, if you love your neighbors yourself. That one is really challenging in, in the way that Jesus presents that in Luke. Okay. So, uh, uh, learn a love, meaningful enough capable enough to cross the hard barriers between me and my neighbors. Again, Samaritan, the hard barriers. Okay. All right? So that would be maybe that sentence. And then I'm going to preach that. And when I'm done preaching that, you're going to know I preached that. Did I just yell? Okay? But I'm going to come back to that because it, this really has to do with congealing and focusing a, a message. So the people walk away going, I felt that man. I know what you meant. I, man, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about that all week long. That's what I want. I, I, I want to, you know, I, I this professor in one of my churches, she, she teaches nursing education to nursing master's students. And she says, I want you to come to my class and do a, a, a panel about how to communicate. I, I didn't quite understand, but I was a church person. I was like, okay, I'll come. So she introduces me to the two other members of the panel. I am Dr. Simmons, so I have three degrees from nursing. I have in nursing. Good. I'm in nursing. I'm Dr. Simmons, so I have three degrees from nursing. I'm in nursing. I'm a message preacher. And so 
So the thesis and the question she asked is, how do you, what, what's your fundamental question about, I can't remember what I asked you. What's, what's your fundamental desire when you go to speak? I want to access their souls. I want to ask them. I want to access them in a way that they are thousand percent engaged in the topic I'm coming to bring. And so when we're all done, you know, there was a discussion of nursing and theory and all these other weird things. I'm thinking, this is the stupidest I've ever looked. And we walked out, and every student left grabbing me. That was the most meaningful thing I ever went through in my life. And I'm like, what just? <laughs> but their agenda was to convey a message. That's what they were in this class for. Um, like, like health, you know, if they're teaching somebody to go manage their own health, if you don't, you'll die. It's kind of relevant. Okay? <laughs> and so, so the fact that I was quest asking them the question, how can I engage someone? Where when they walk out, they can say, I got this. That's my question. And they were like, well, that's the coolest thing ever. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah. Because I'm smart than you, dude. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was something to go through, but that's, that's my major agenda. What I was going to say right now is, I haven't used a theological word yet when I talk about preaching to you, because I'm not going to. You're, now your phone is burping. <laughs> It doesn't smell, it's okay. But but I do want you to know that every sermon I preach, even if there's going to be one visitor, or even if there's none, I'm going to use language that the visitor can access. With an absolute rigidity. If I use the word lectionary, I explain it. Now, the people who've been in my church for five years and I've been there four and a half years, they're going, yeah, I know, I'm about it, but I'm never going to use a word like that unless I explain it. You're going to say something? Oh, yeah. What do you call it? Well, you know, it's funny. We, we normally have our UMW do with Lady Sunday and they bail. <laughs> so, uh, we're not doing Lady Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think you can say that. I, would, I wouldn't use the word lady. Yeah, no way. I, if I did, I would explain. Just like, you know, Methodism requires us to make the invitation when we do communion. You're supposed to say, everyone, you're supposed to say. Well, you know, in a lot of churches, whether everybody is welcome or not, they don't explain it. It's communion. They don't interrupt by saying, the following people can or cannot come to the point. In Methodism, we're supposed to articulate that every time. What? Because it's a mindset about being willing to hear the outsider and have them understand. So we take communion every Sunday in church. So guess what? My people know. And, and it's cool because I've had so many people say, Rob, I just so appreciate the way every Sunday you explain the open communion. And, and I've asked many, well, gee, I, I'm surprised you like it because I know you've heard it like a million times. But I know you're doing that for the first time. I try not to kiss church people when they say stuff like that because it's weird. Mm -hmm. yeah. My point is, you need to find a way to, now listen, a lot of pastors say 
educational words in church would be manifest their souls that didn't hear them anyway. I still want to raise questions of how you communicate, not just that you communicate. By the way, when I was brand new Christian, brand new, I mean, I had one of those conversions, you know, the evangelicals love me, because they, they mostly hate us, right? The year of Methodist, oh gosh. Right? But then they find out I had a big conversion, and they're like, well. <clears throat> <laughs> so, so I go to church, and all I remember about church, because I hadn't been in right time, but I remember the music was horrible. That's all I remember. I'm going to church for personal, and oh, man, I remember, you know, ah, and all that, you know, and I'm walking in, they're going to sing hymns, and oh, great, I'm going to hate this. And they had this opening time where it's like hymns select suggestions. Uh, and they sing Bringing in the Sheaves, and I don't know what a sheave is. So I'm going, bringing in, whatever, bringing in, and I'm thinking, yep, I'm hating it, just like I thought I would. And here I am, I've met God, I really want to have a life with God, with God's people, but I'm like, Lord. And then somebody said, let's sing the same song and sing John 3.16. And I'm like, great, I don't know what that means, okay? I don't know what's in John, what that was, okay? This is going to be another stupid moment, man, this has been a really bad first day. And then they all stand up, okay, let's sing John 3.16. And then they went, John 3.16, John 3.16. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I got it! Yeah! <laughs> Check it out! I thought I had a bunch of words to <laughs> I'm so, yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, Which I think rhetorical questions are talking to. Don't you think rhetorical questions are talking to other people? <laughs> Do we believe the Bible? Don't we believe the Bible? You know, I'm, I'm so show, slow to ask questions like that. I, I, and, and the once in a while, well, I'll catch myself asking a rhetorical question, a question that the, the meaning is self evident. Okay? Then I'll be mad at myself for weeks if I ask questions. Like that. <laughs> It's just down to It really is the setting that you played in. Like, I mean, preaching in Orland versus preaching in that Palo Alto First United Methodist Church is two different things. Because in a church like, you know, like that church, you know, it's full of academics and they'll understand words. You know, joys and concerns. I'm going to pray for all, all the people we mentioned today, as much as it means praying the mood of the congregation. So, if like we've just all been through 911, a good comment would be, God, this was horrible. We grieving the depths of our soul, shock. So that's not, you know, we're going to pray for John's toe. A good comment is being where the people are. Well, 